I'm your host, Logan23. You're joining me for Frisk Me, Chapter 10. On paper, you know this is just another part of the job. A friendly way to help Luke feel more comfortable and to make up for all the prying you've been doing. But things aren't quite that simple. And no matter how you look at it, this definitely feels like a date. Which, of course, means choosing the right outfit. My first date with Luke, I'll wear something... Oh my god! Wow. Katana, is that you? Gorgeous. Yeah. Pfft, okay. Wow. Alright. I like the I like the sweater we have. Just going out to be comfortable. After all, this isn't really a date, and I don't want to give him the wrong idea. Yeah, that black outfit would definitely give me the wrong idea. <clears throat> By the time you arrive at the restaurant, you're surprised to find Luke is already waiting for you. Wow, you filmed this place without me? I'm impressed. I'm uh, a New Yorker, Ava. I know my way around the city. Two of you grab a spot at the bar while you wait for a table. Um, speaking of the city, what area do you live in? A tiny box in the financial district. Total crap house, not like you. Uh, living in the Upper West Side, right? Yep, it's a pretty sweet spot. Sure, you're dying to know how can I afford it? Nope, no one filled me in. You live with her, right? Yep, me and my brothers. Must be fun, you ever want to move out? A little sad to be living with Nona, isn't it? No, she's a nice lady. And actually, that's becoming a more common occurrence in America to be living with your parents to 30s or 40s. Sad, really. Um, ever want to move out? One day, sure, but I'm in no rush. I love my family, and it's nice to be there to help take care of her. As eyes check the list of drinks, clearly taken aback by the prices. Don't worry, I've got this handy thing called a corporate credit card and a hefty spending limit. So, what can a CBC get you from the bar? I'll uh, have what you're having. I'll have a. Noa? Chante, Chardonnay. Yeah, these are all outside my goddamn price range. Too fancy, you can tell by how hard it is to pronounce them. Let's go with a Chianti. Fortunately, it doesn't take long for the drinks to arrive, and after a few sips, you're both enjoying a nice buzz. So, you can see his eyes already drifting down your length, taking in every inch of you. He's clearly enjoying the view, I'll say. Like what you see? Oh, very much so. Well, I'm flattered, but uh, keep in mind why we're really here. You're supposed to be getting to know me, so let the questions commence and keep it clean, Moretti. Clears the throat. Okay, let's start with the basics. How long are we gonna pretend that we don't want to be in bed right now? Or against a wall? Or on a kitchen counter? Wow, that didn't take long. Although I can't say I don't agree with him. I should want to back off. I wouldn't possibly know what you're talking about. He has a playful eye roll. Really? Nope, and even if I did, you have to try a lot harder than that, officer. Your table's ready! Perfect. Those just lead you to your own private spot in the restaurant, the ambience slowly adding to the sexual tension between you. I gotta say, I still can't picture you as a small town girl. Believe it, my graduating class had under a hundred people. I passed cornfields on my way to cheerleading practice. Cheerleader, huh? That's pretty on. You can't help but roll your eyes. What is it with men and cheerleaders? Do I... Dude, uh, I don't even know. What is it with women and men in uniforms? Shake a finger in his face, even as you enjoy his blatant cockiness. Uh-huh. No, nice try, but no cigar. We've already established the fact that I'm not just another one of your groupies. Although I'll admit, I get it now. Get what? I'll say... Why you're such the family charmer? 
You're pretty good at it when you're not being an uptight ass. You flatter me, Ava. Well, don't just let it go to your head. Oh, don't worry. I'd much rather leave that to you. Seriously, Luke, you've been whining for two weeks about how I'm prying into your life. Well, here's your chance to pry into mine. Okay, then. I have a question. A little bit prying. Bring it on. I'm just wondering, how short width is that cheerleader skirt? Bra, can you actually think with your big brain instead of your small brain for like two minutes, please? I'll say... Why are you keeping the superficial? This is the opportunity to get to know me, and you're just asking these on-the-surface type questions? It's almost like you don't care at all. I care. I care a lot. Maybe I'm just warming up to the big stuff. A piece of your duck for a bite of my steak. You both exchange bites of your entrees, a moment of shared intimacy passing between you. The two of you eat in comfortable silence until you feel his gaze on you. What? You do this often. Eat dinner? <laughs> he smiles, slow and dangerous. Don't be a smartass. I mean, eat dinner with someone else, you know? Go on dates. I'll say... Not recently. I used to put more effort in uh, trying to date. It's what 20-something women in New York are supposed to do, but... But... It's exhausting. It, it actually is. I'm a guy and I'm gonna tell you it's actually exhausting. Well, let me ask you something, Officer Moretti. I give you a free pass to dig into my entire personal life and you only want to focus on my romantic endeavors. Why is that? You await the usual flirtatious banter that flows from him, but your surprise his expression goes dark. I can venture into other topics if you want, but somehow I don't think you're gonna like them. Meaning? He leans forward. The first day in Captain Brinker's office, I didn't bother hiding the fact that I didn't want to be part of any of this. But my cop instincts were telling me that you don't want any part of this either. Can you explain that? We'll say... What makes you say that? Like I said, my instincts. You're acting like you've never been wrong before. I didn't say that. I said my instincts are never wrong. An interesting and precise claim. Sounds like he's saying that he made a mistake by not following his instincts at some point. You mean like... You break off, suddenly unsure if you want to go in that direction. Do I mean, like what? <sighs> you mean like the Shayna Johnson case? The one where a little girl ended up dead? No, I can't ask him that. Not yet. N never mind. Luke sets his fork down and commits to studying you. You're holding out on me, aren't you? Hmm. Just like you're holding back on me. He lifts his glass to you. To secrets. You roll your eyes even as you mimic his motion. The secrets you get to keep for now. But at least tell me this. What? The story wasn't your idea, was it? No, it wasn't. What gave me away? Shrugs. Seem too tame for you. Your designer clothes, plastic smile, all said that you were just a network lackey following through on your assignment. But your eyes said otherwise. That you can't help but groan. Oh, come on, Moretti. I'll have to retract my statement about you being good with the ladies if you're going to feed me that read-my-eyes garbage. Ah, Ava. Such a cynic. I prefer to call myself a realist. Facial expressions and tones might give things away, but my eyes are eyes. They're blue, they're brown, they blink, but they uh, don't tell stories. You're wrong. 
He says it so confidently you almost believe him. Almost. Alright, this guy's so confident, time to put his skills to the test. I'll ask. Nothing, because he's full of... I may not like the fluffy pieces like this, but that doesn't mean I'm buying this in the eyes, BS. So why agree to do the story at all? It's a no-brainer. When your boss's boss offers a prime time slot, you take it. Especially when... Especially when what? When Gwyn Garrison is getting ready to retire, and that's confidential. Don't tell us all. Believe me, I won't. I don't even know who Gwyn Garrison is. You can't help but let out a laugh. The most famous anchor woman on television, and he doesn't know her. Figures I fall for the one guy who couldn't care less about how close I am to the big time. Did I say falling for Luke? Oh, God. This is really happening, isn't it? Let's just say that if all goes well, I'll be the next Gwyn Garrison. And that's a good thing. I'll say... It's why I came to New York to begin with. I came here with a goal in mind and I'm close now. Really close. That's not what I asked. I asked if it was a good thing. Yeah, of course. Hmm, well, at least you know what you want. I like a woman who goes after what she wants, as long as she's gorgeous and what she wants is me. I never said I wanted you. You didn't have to, Ava. It's right there in your eyes, just like I said. You're a piece of work, officer. A piece of work I like very, very much. Your eyes told him so. After dinner, Luke insisted he walk you back to your place, which is exactly what he did. I still can't believe you paid for dinner. Let a woman pay on the first date? Never. I'll say... It is old-fashioned. I'm a very old-fashioned man, and... And it threw me off when a woman did it, surprisingly, during one of my dates. But anyway. Um... That's also sweet. I told you the station would pay. And the fact that my employer was willing to foot the bill should make it rather clear that it wasn't a date. You keep telling yourself that. Not to sound like a broken record, but you never answered my question. Why did you insist on doing the story? Really? Isn't it written all in my eyes? That only gives me highlights with the full version. The what makes Ava tick version. I don't know how to explain it without sounding driven, ambitious, aggressive. Well, good news, Ava. The cat's already out of the bag on those trades. I want to be an anchor woman. Stop as soon as you say it, realizing you've reached the outside of your apartment. Sounds like a reasonable goal for a reporter. Yeah, but it's competitive and political, and... I'm worried by the time something opens up, I'll be too old. Old? Oh, you're what, 25? 28, and don't give me that spring chicken with the whole life ahead of me routine, because age works differently in TV. If I look like the type of guy who'd use that phrase, spring chicken, I need to do some serious reevaluating with my life. Come on, let's get you home. I am home. You've met Nona. What do you think she'll do to me when she finds out I didn't walk a lady to her apartment door? <sighs> Alright, Moretti, but let it be known. I will be calling you old fashioned at some point in my story. Bring it on. The kind of girls I go for love old fashioned guys. As the two of you reach the door, you realize you're reaching the deciding moment of the night. The kiss or no kiss moment. That it wasn't a date. You turn to him, and you can already tell, much to your joy and surprise, that he's thinking the same thing. I guess Moretti may have been partially right after all. The truth is all in his eyes. Let's see if he's good as he says. I should give him the signal. It's all in the eye. Kiss him myself. Say goodnight. Oof. Thanks for the dinner. I had a lovely night. You can tell he's disappointed that things are ending here. 
but the old-fashioned charm follows close behind. I had a great time, too. I'll, uh, see you tomorrow. That's a promise. It's not until you're alone in the shower that you realize that this is the most you've looked forward to tomorrow in a long, long time. Well, hope you all did enjoy the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And the description below links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support yours truly. And without further ado, I hope you all did enjoy the uh, video. And uh, you should let me know in the comment section. Or, uh, you know, drop a like, a share, you know, things like that. But, uh, yeah. Catch you all in the next video. Peace.